Hey guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. I'm a bit crooked, I think. It's good enough. Um, it's been a while since my last video, as always, but I thought I'd come back and do one before the end of the year to show you what I've been working on, what I got for Christmas, and what I started, what I finished, <laughs> um, and talk about some plans for next year, because I have, I have a few plans, not a lot, but a few. Um, so, Let's talk about it. Um, oh, thank you to everyone who wished me luck with my new job. It's uh, it's going fine. It's fine. I really miss the old job though, because you know, being able to watch Floss Tube for nine hours for a whole nine hour shift <laughs> and not do any work was amazing. Now I am actually having to work for my money, <laughs> but it's more money, so I think it's worth it. I suppose. Um, not pregnant yet. Working on it. Um, the plan is that. If we're not pregnant by next April, we'll be trying IVF, um, which I'm feeling optimistic about. Um, I realise it's invasive and unpleasant and so on, but I feel like it'll work. <laughs> um, so there is a light coming down the tunnel, so I'm happy to keep trying for the next few months. Um, I've got pages and pages of notes here. I've just got so much stuff to do. I was thinking about also doing a whip parade, but I think that's just kind of too much work to do at the moment. Um, I'm not really in the mood to do a whip parade. <sighs> Although maybe I should, because it's the end of the year. I could do one tomorrow. Tomorrow is December 31st. I could do it tomorrow or I could do it on the 1st of January. I don't know, <laughs> maybe I should. It's nice. <laughs> a lot of people say, it's such a treat to have your videos. And I feel the same way when my favorite foster has put up a video that it really is a treat. Um, and it's kind of holiday time at the moment, so maybe I will. I don't know. Um, I hope you all had a great holiday period. If you celebrate Christmas, happy Merry Christmas. Um, if you celebrate something else, Merry that too. Um, I hope, you know, everyone at least had a nice time of year and got to spend some time with family and friends, or at least some time by yourself. We went down to the coast for only two nights. We were supposed to go for like 10 days or something, but I had a blood test to come back for um, and then we decided to just stay home and now we've been having a staycation and this staycation is going to go until next Friday which is no until next Monday which is still another week of staycation yes I love staycation it's the best um, so yeah been relaxing doing lots of stitching and not much else all right let's get on to some stuff I've had one finish I finished the Udo whale ta-da isn't he cute? He's super cute. I love him. He turned out so nicely. Um, he uh, he really kind of dragged at the end. I was just ready to finish him and this tail seemed to take a long time because there's a lot of stitching in it really. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I need to frame it. I have a frame picked out. Um, I buy most of my frames from frames online these days or frameshop, no it's frameshop.com.au I buy most of my frames from there I can usually get a frame this size for about $40 um, so I have one picked out and I'll order that next payday <laughs> Christmas has been um, really great this year um, but expensive <laughs> so yay hopefully I will have him framed up by the next video he's going to be entered in the show I've entered five things in the show um, the, the Canberra show I think the entries close in February uh, and I'm not expecting I'll finishing anything else before then so yay I'm very happy to have him done um, I started this as a stitch along with with um, with Jani Stitcher she's you must know her she's from Mexico she has an amazing floss tube towel um, and of course she finished it in like four days and I have finished it a year later but there you go it's finished now whoops um, I don't know if anyone noticed, but that's like the third whale I've stitched this year. <laughs> I stitched the, um, the drum. Um, my Sarah Elliott has whales on it and also has a massive whale on the scissor fob, which is what I have not worked on for ages, but I'm kind of working on now. And this one, that's three whales in one year. That's, uh, too many whales. <laughs> and whales are like usually big and boring. Like, look at this. That's a lot of plain white stitching. <laughs> Um, so that was my only finish. No, there was another finish. I wonder if I have Instagram on this iPad so I can show you. 
Um, so have you heard of Reddit? It's a website, it's basically a social media re website where you share articles with people or you ask people's opinion and they write back to you. Um, oops, can't remember my password. Um, so there's a big thing called Reddit Secret Santa and basically you just matched up with a random person in the world and um, give them a Secret Santa gift. And I decided to participate in that. Um, and my Secret Santa recipient said he loves spicy food and Rick and Morty. <laughs> so I actually did stitch in something and it's already been sent off to him so I can't show you. But that is what it looks like. This is a Rick and Morty cross stitch. That's how I framed it. Um, it's an ugly sweater cross stitch, as you can tell. Uh, so it's got Rick and Morty and the crazy Santa and a lot of Mr. Meeseeks at the bottom. And it says Wubba Lubba Dub Dub. And that is a smaller version of the original pattern. The pattern was by Clarissa Stitches It All on Etsy. Um, and it's called Rick and Morty Christmas Sweater. And there was, a, there was another row at the top that had a spaceship and some reindeer pulling the spaceship through a portal. I didn't stitch that bit because I was under time pressure. I think I had 17 days to stitch that. Um, yeah, so that was kind of a lot of work. Just give me one moment, I'm gonna shut my door. Okay, I'm back. I said to my husband, I'm about to go and fill my floss tube. Uh, don't interrupt me for an hour. And we're five minutes into the video and he's decided to get up and make himself lunch. Yeah, anyway, so I've closed the door now. We won't get interrupted. <laughs> Uh, so those were my two finishes, uh, very happy about that. I have some progress, okay, something I didn't mention in my last video that I don't think I mentioned it in my last video was that I actually UFO'd a project. It was Fire and Ice, um, which is the horse that's like, it looks like it's been lit up by fire on one side, so it's red on one side and blue on the other. Um, that's gone. And I'm really happy because I started that 15 years ago and I'm ready to be done. So progress I have worked on. I may have worked on this before the last video, but I can't remember if I showed you. This is Sir and JD. Let me put something behind it so it looks a little better. There we go. Nope. That is terrible. That is terrible. That's better. So you can see what I've worked on is everything above this row of flowers. So there's a few more motifs I have been working on. Um, there are more motifs above this. And of course I obviously have to finish all here. Um, this is what it will look like when it's done. This is my horrible, horrible working copy. Um, this is such a beautiful design. So what I have done down here is everything. I've done this big V this thing on the side and everything between there and here so basically i just need to finish the top here and down here and then the two peacocks so i think i'm it's possible to finish this next year and it's something i'd like to work towards it does stitch up quite quickly um it's on 32 count black linen uh it's one strand of floss um, in the called for silks um, and people say think that one strand on 32 count is like not enough coverage but actually it is it's really good um, so yeah there's that the other thing I worked on is hang on I have to get organized there's too much stuff going on here um, the beta Maya sample I don't know if you guys remember this one I started this in mania of 2018 didn't do mania this year um, there's a, another mock-up if that's clearer I'm not sure um, but yeah I think this is gorgeous this is by 12 Clan and McClup, um, and you have to look for them on Facebook and I bought this pattern digitally and that is all I've done so far <laughs> that's it so basically all I have done before is this motif and I've gone and done the blue one and this part of this red one that you can see up in the corner here this, this red one here um, so that motif isn't finished yet, but I'm still working on it. I'm stitching this with the Cold for DMC on a 55 count white linen. Um, 55 count is called Kingston linen from Zweigart. 
Um, and yes, of course, one strand of DMC over two. Um, and 55 count is very tiny. If you do your math, that is about 23 stitches per inch. So it's almost like stitching one over one on 25 count. Um, but I really like it. It's turning out very nicely. It's a little bulky, but um, I'll stick with it for this. I'm really happy with this. This has been calling to me. I've been wanting to get back to it. Um, but it's kind of hard going on the on the 55 count. And I've also just had so many other things calling to me at this time that I just decided to stop that and work on a restart. So remember in my last video, I was talking about a peacock, a unicorn, a badger. Uh, this is by the Scarlet Letter. Um, so there it is. Um, I was having a problem with the fabric I had originally chosen. It was a 40 count Verdol even weave. And I felt that the fabric was sort of a bit stretchy. And because of that, my stitches weren't laying nicely. Um, I'm using the Cold 4 over Aswar Swat LJ Silks. Um, and here's my restart. So there we go. I've got a crazy looking sun, a spiky flower. Actually, <laughs> I realized when I'd finished it this morning that um, it's actually not a spiky flower, it's a butterfly. Why on earth I thought a spiky flower was flying around in the sky up there? I don't know, but there you go, it's a butterfly and some clouds. And I've done some of this green color that I'm filling in. Um, so there we go. I'm happy to have restarted. This is going much better for me. This is 40 count mallow. Um, I heard some people say they don't like the mallow because it kind of shreds the threads. Um, but I haven't had a problem with that. Um, because I'm stitching with silk, I keep my lengths of thread quite short, so that might be why. But um, yeah, I'm really, really so much happier with this since I restarted it. Um, and I like the mallow. And I'm very pleased to have restarted it. I'm really happy with how it's turning out, and I actually don't want to put it down. Um, I am going to put it down today. Um, because I'm going to work on my new start that I've had since Christmas, um, which I will talk about now. Uh, so my new start was a Christmas present from my mum. Thank you, mum. She bought me a Chatelaine kit. Um, of course I told her which one I wanted. It is, it's really hard to find a good photo of this, you know, what it's like with Chatelaine's. But this is a blow up of the chart. So there we go. This is, I think the full name is amazing Marie Antoinette Rose Garden Kaleidoscope. Yes, oops, it was upside down. Amazing Marie Antoinette's Rose Garden Kaleidoscope. Um, I'm just calling it Rose Garden or Rose Garden Kaleidoscope for short. I think this is gorgeous. It's so pretty, really nice colors. And I of course have started it because I have no restraint. And there it is. Um, so yeah, not much to see yet. I've got, these here are some, not eyelets, what are they? Smyrna crosses here in each of the four corners. And then everything else is just plain old cross stitch. And I'm just going with, with the big outlines of the areas. Um, this this one here, the gold color, is a petite silk lame braid, which I've never used before and I love it. I wish I could switch out every metallic for a silk lame braid. It's so nice to stitch with. It's really <laughs> a million times nicer than um, even, you know, this is um, the silver is petite treasure braid. And I stitched the gold first and I came to the treasure braid and I'm like, ugh, this is terrible. <laughs> it felt like, you know, usually when you sit with Krynik and you're like complaining about that, that's what the tre treasure braid felt like after I've been stitching with the petite lame. Um, but it's very pretty. There's so many pretty details in this with like little over one bees and some lovely black work, well, kind of black work sections, but in color. Um, yeah, this is very enjoyable to stitch. I'm so happy to have a Chatelaine on the go again. Um, it's been too long, too long. <laughs> um, yeah, since I finished my Japanese Octagon box last May or April, last April. Um, so it's been over. Yeah, 18 month, over 18 months since I stitched a Chatelaine, so I'm very, 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 very happy to have this on the go. And thank you, Mum, for my Christmas present. I also, I bought this one for myself. This is my other Chatelaine that I got. This is Mushroom and Fern. 
Um, I'm not getting everything out because because I'm like that. Oh, and I've chosen um 32 count platinum Lugana for that. But I won't start this until I finished Rose Garden Kaleidoscope. And for Rose Garden, I'm doing the just the call for it's um 32 count antique white linen. Belfast. So there's. Oh, I'm so happy with this. Um, I'm just thrilled with all my whips at the moment. Um, I didn't stitch much this year for months at a time. I had got way more into playing games and I was enjoying that more than stitching. I am ready now to get back into stitching. The month of December has been really good for stitching for me. Um, and it's so nice. I've been watching more floss tube, which of course helps with my motivation. And yeah, it's really nice to be enjoying my, excuse me, my eyes itchy. Really nice to be enjoying my stitching again. Okay. So we did the start, the restart, the progress, the finishes, the UFO. Um, I wanted to talk about some of my stats for 2019. Um, so in 2019, I participated in cross stitch ATCs and I actually stitched 10 ATCs for random people around the world. Um, if you don't know what an ATC is, it's a little two and a half by three and a half inch. It stands for artist trading card. So basically uh, it fits in these little baseball card, baseball card holders. That's two and a half by three and a half. And I just stitch a little cross stitch and glue it to some cardboard and make it look cute and send it away. So I've done 10 of those this year and I've also received 10, um, which I was really happy about. Um, I've been part of a round robin this year um, and I have completed three sections on, th two, on three different people's round robins. Um, I have another one in my possession now, that's Sydney's, um, but I have not yet stitched it. Um, so in total, I had 23 starts. That includes the, all of these numbers include the ATCs and round robins. So if you take off 13, you'll get the right number. Um, yeah, 23 starts. <clears throat> I had two UFOs. So I UFO'd Fire and Ice, as we talked about. I also earlier in the year UFO'd Nantucket Rose. Um, I may pick that up again one day, but right now I'm not interested at all in stitching that. Maybe one day, but not now. Um, I have 21 finishes this year. Um, if you take away the ATCs and the Run Robins, it's only eight finishes, so it's not as amazing as it sounds. I mean, an ATC, it takes about four or five hours of stitching, even less sometimes. Um, so it's a bit naughty, maybe, counting them as finishes and FFOs. I also had 23 FFOs. Um, but, you know, I, I still stitch them. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to show you my uh, finishes. I already showed you the Gudo Whale. That was one. Um, let me... I remember where the list is. There we go. The first finish of the year was the sampler name tag. Please forgive how terribly this is FFO'd. Um, I did, I finished this and FFO'd this in a big hurry before I went to Nashville. Um, so there we go, that's my name. Uh, this is a sampler name tag by, I think it's by Darlene Osteen. I think. <laughs> um, which is the Needles Praise. Um, so there are, the grapes up here are in sort of eyelets. Um, the strawberries are queen stitches, and these flowers here have some satin stitches in them. Um, so I love the colors. They're so 90s. They're so like dated. They're very cool. Um, but I really think these are my colors. Honestly, I love them. Um, yeah, I put some pink polka dots on the back and just some ribbon there. And I actually did wear this at Nashville um, on my lanyard, but because I was wearing a jacket the whole time, it was cold. Um, I don't think a lot of people saw it. A couple of people did and commented, but I've wanted for a long time a stitched name tag, so I'm happy about that. Oh, the original name tag was supposed to be a lot thinner, so I had to add, because my stupid last name is so long, <laughs> I had to add, the original thing actually cut off these two bits on the side there and didn't have, I think it only had one of the strawberries so it was only that wide and that is a much nicer shape but because I've got such a stupid long surname now guys I don't like my surname Shh, don't tell my husband <laughs> I'm still getting used to it it's only been 18 months nearly 18 months and I hate it <laughs> um, anyway back to finishes the second finish of the year 
was Ode to the Oort by With My Needle and Thread. Um, this was a market release and because I was lucky enough to go to market, I decided to start this. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to market next year. Um, 2020, I won't be able to go because I won't have leave from my new job, for one thing. Um, actually, that's the main thing. Mum is considering going herself, uh, but I don't think she will because she says she doesn't have leave either. Um, I'm disappointed. I hope to go in 2021, but I might have a baby at that point, so I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm disappointed. Uh, but never mind. Nothing I can do about it. It's it. Even if it was a once in a lifetime experience, it was worth it. No, it won't be once in a lifetime. I'll be going again, I promise. But I just can't make it this year. Um, so there is, this is Ode to the Oort. It came with this tin and a pattern and that's all. Um, the wording on the chart was kind of confusing. It sounded like it came with the uh, strawberry. Did not come with the strawberry. I made this out of some wool, um, not felt, it's not felt. It's like woven wool. Um, I just cut myself out a little sort of cone shape and a little piece of green to stick on the top. This is just wool. It's not even, um, <laughs> it's not even twisted cord. It's just a piece of wool. And that's the little stitch on the top. I used my own colors. Um, the fabric was, ooh, I think it's called Sugar Cane Crunch Lugana 28 count by Stitches and Spice. Um, they don't make fabric anymore, um, but this was a really old piece I had left over. And the threads, I chose my own um, Victorian mottos from my stash. So, I'm very happy with that. It's very cute. And I had this at work when I stitched at work for my orts at work. So, yeah. I think it's super cute. Oh, and I put some magnets under the needle, under the lid, and kept needles on those magnets. So that when I was at work, I would have spare needles. So, I'm really happy with that. Um, so cute. There's an Ode to the Oort number one that came with a little basket that I would love to get a hold of, but that is harder than hen's teeth to find. Crazy. Uh, the next finish was also a market release. This is the Needle Stamps. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love this. Um, the Night Forest Wakes as the Needle Stamps. This was a collaboration design by um, Ink Circles, Summer House Stitch Works and Hands On Design. <laughs> uh, and isn't it cute? It's so pretty. Um, the colors are coming up really good for you. This is exactly what the colors look like. Um, this beautiful blue fabric is called Blue Moon uh, Linen. It's 32 count and it's by Wichelt. Um, and I haven't yet finished fully FFO it because I need to put paper on the back, but I laced it myself. Uh, yeah, I love this. It's very pretty. Um, I, at market, attended um, a workshop called something like how to use exclusives for your business. And so they gave us this chart and they told us stitch it up as your shop model. And then a few months later, we were able to buy charts from them. We were able to kit them up ourselves. We were able to put in extra things for ourselves. We could um, get needle minders. Um, they gave us like um, design files to print um to, so it came in a box i don't have the box it came in a box with like a sticker on the front that was personalized with our name and they recommended we do that and things like that but they said every shop can do it differently you can decide to kit it up with dmc if you want um it calls for clever works so we do have the kit available in our shop if you're interested um it's gorgeous it's really cute so so happy with this um so cute so then my next finish was Sarah Brazier. Just a minute. Here is some shaky can footage of Sarah Brazier hanging on my wall. I love it. Um, our dining table is right behind me. So I sit at the dining table every day staring at this instead of listening to my husband talk. <laughs> okay, I just broke my tripod when I came back in the room. Look, this totally broke off, snapped off. Anyway, so now you're propped up on a box and you're in the wrong spot. I don't like it. You're too low. Um, okay, can't fix it now. Let's move on. So that's Sarah Brazier. Um, she was a huge undertaking. She took me 15 months time elapsed to stitch, but actual time stitching was probably 
eight months, nine months. Um, I wish I could have finished her sooner, but I'm very happy to have her done. She was a lot of work, but she's beautiful and worth it. Okay, uh, next was Yuletide Shanty. I already showed you this. My little drum finish. This is by Plum Street Samplers. Sarah Brazier was done on 46 count custom dyed linen from X2 Design. This is a mystery 40 count. I had it in my stash. It's kind of just a natural color. Um, there's the top, the Santa on a ship. There's the whale and the, the whole Christmas tree under the sea. And on the bottom it says, Old Saint Nick, he sails the seas. His beard grows long so he won't freeze. And I think it's super cute. Uh, my next finish is an Larson Loughborough. There she is. I love this. This is also by Plum Street. Um, these were the first two Plum Streets I've ever stitched and I only stitched them really because of the retreat I was going to. I'm so happy with how this, tur this turned out. It's beautiful. This is um, a Plum Street antique. So she reproduced this herself. It says, hark from the tomb, a doleful sound. My ear attend the cry. You living men come view the ground where you must shortly lie. Princes, this clay must be your bed in spite of all your towers. The tall, the wise, the reverend head must lie as low as ours. So happy with this. Um, I want to put a sample wall behind me, so I want to stick this right in the middle. One day. Not today. Um, and then the last two finishes of the year were my Yudo whale and my Rick and Morty ugly sweater. So that was my year. Um, I also did 10 ATCs and 3 round robins, and if you want to see them, the best place is probably going to be my Instagram, which is Tashage, T-A-S-H-A-G-E. Um, so, 2020 plans. Okay. Um, I've been thinking about having a new year, new start, but I'm not sure. Um, I have 46 whips at the moment, that's a lot, and the one I want to start is Mahusif. It's large. Is this? It's a canvas work piece. This is called Nova by Jenny Morrow. Um, yeah, it's very large. Um, the piece of canvas I have for it is 16 by 20. So I think the finished piece is going to be 12 by 16 inches. Um, one over one on 18 count. Sorry, not one over one. I think it's four over one, most of it, on 18 count. So I've had this in my stash for about 15 years. And I fell in love with it when I first saw it and I didn't know what canvas work was. Uh, um, and nowadays I've seen more canvas work pieces and I think that this isn't the most amazing one, but I still love it because it's colorful and massive. I just love massive things. Um, I think the reason, the thing that's putting me off starting this, this has been intended to be my new year, new start for about three years. Um, but when I start this, I hope to have a plan for working on it, like finish one block a day or four blocks a week or something. I don't know what I can commit to at this point. Um, and I kind of don't want it to sit there with one block completed uh, in the cupboard for who knows how long. Um, I have the canvas, I have the stretcher bars, I have the anchor threads. This calls for anchor and DMC and Ava Rosenstand threads. Um, uh, so I'm ready to go, but... I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think I should start this? It's really massive. Um, and I have plenty of other things to work on. <laughs> um, the other New Year New Starts I have been thinking of doing um, are stitch alongs. So there are a few stitch alongs this year I'm thinking of joining in. Oh, I would love to do the Quaker Seasons of Friendship, but I haven't got the chart yet. Um, I actually wrote an email to Dying to Stitch. That's the shop you can get the chart from. Uh, it's in Virginia Beach. Uh, I wrote an email and said, hey, can I get this chart? Here's my PayPal address. And they wrote back and said, yes, of course you can have it, um, but we don't take PayPal. You'll need to phone the shop and give us your credit card number over the phone. And I can't do that. I've already had my credit card cancelled twice, twice this year. I, I don't want to do that. Um, so um, next time I get over there for market, I'll just have to make a trip to Virginia Beach. It's not far. It's only a few hours. I'll just take a day to do that and there's some good there's a lot of good shops around there actually I could go to Sassy Jack's I'd love to like come down from New York and go past Needleworkers Delight or Silkweaver whatever the Silkweaver shop's called yeah mm, anyway 
So that's one I wanted to start one stitch along, but I won't be able to. I, you know, I got that green silk last video, um, the hank of silks for you silk. I want to do this great seasons of friendship in that. Um, there's an Ufendel sister stitch along starting soon. Might be the first, I'm not sure. Um, of course I want to stitch an Ufendel. I think I'll leave off the middle band. I'll just do the top and bottom and border. Don't know, or I'll, I'll just, maybe I'll just stitch that top center motif that's really beautiful. Um, and then later in the year, there is a Botany Bay um, stitch along starting. That is the chart by Linen and Threads. Well, that's the reproduction by Linen and Threads. Um, and it's nice because it's actually an Australian sampler. Um, so I'd like to start that. That one, that one I'll be able to start. I'll have fabric by then and threads. I'm guessing it just uses, D I'm only using DMC for it. Um, and as for new starts, I think that's it for the next year that I currently have planned. I think a year is much too long to actually expect to plan. For me, at least. And I think for most people, who can make plans in December and still have the same motivations next December, you know? A lot of things change. We don't know yet what's come out of market. How can anyone make plans? That's what I think. <laughs> um, I want to restart Portuguese Bird Sampler at some point. I did start that during Sampler September. And then, um, and then I saw Mev Stitches in Paris has done it in Weeks Dye Works. So I've already unpicked that and un <laughs> un um, whipped it unpicked it put the fabric away I also don't like my fabric anymore because hers is so good um so I'm going to talk to her and see if she'll share her conversion and restart it and I'd, I'd like to do that next year um other things for next year are I want to finish and a forest grew um that is very doable I'm about two-thirds done maybe I haven't done the whole center part and I haven't done the whole top left um but if I go back to stitching every weekend on And a Forest Grew, um, two motifs per weekend, which is what I used to do and it worked so well, um, I'll finish that top left section very quickly in, I don't know, a few months. Um, and then the center part, I've already charted out the verse I want to use. I just have to actually stitch it. Uh, so I think that's very finishable this year. Um, I need to finish Sarah Elliott. That is the... Uh, thing I'm stitching for my mum. It's a sewing box. I finished the box top lid. I finished the um, Bits cornu. I finished one or two of the there are a bunch of things that go inside. I finished one or two of those I'm Currently working on the scissor, scissor case um, So that has to be finished this year because this year is my mum's 60th birthday. and I want to give it to her um, And the other thing I'd like to finish this year is Siren Jady the black one I just showed you. This one. Uh, that's that's the back. <laughs> um, I'd like to finish that this year. So that is all my kind of goals for the year. Goals and planned starts. Um, yeah, that's. Oh, and the other thing is the round robin. I'm participating in a round robin, as I already said, and I really need to uh, continue keeping up with that as I get the, the parts. Um, I also need to stitch a couple of gifts before sort of June, but that's fine. That's very achievable. Um, as for my plan for how I'm going to tackle stitching this year, um, next year <laughs> in 2020, um, 2019 didn't work so well for me. I, I don't think it was the stitching's fault actually. I got really into playing games and didn't stitch a lot for ages and I want to stitch more this year. Um, I think one of the things that helped in killing my stitchy bug was that I gave myself obligation stitching and deadline stitching. Like I wanted to finish Sarah Brazier. Um, I wanted to finish something else. I don't know what else. Anyway, I found that a deadline really kills my stitchy bug very quickly. Um, or, an, or an obligation. I'm really a stitch what you want when you want kind of girl. Um, and if I'm not stitching what I want, I don't want to stitch and I'll distract myself with something else. So I think my plan this year might be, <laughs> I have 46 whips at the moment. There are 52 weeks in a year. So I think maybe I'll kind of aim to stitch about a week on each piece. And I might, um, might kind of use the wheel to help me pick, you know, the random wheel of decision making. I think it's called, actually called decision roulette or something. 
Um, but I think I'll use the decision wheel to help me decide which piece to stitch. I, yeah, I think I'll spin each week and I might re-spin if I don't like the one I get and um, work on that from Monday to Friday. And then on the weekend I'll do Anna Forest Grew and then I might work on something that I feel needs more work for the rest of the weekend. Um, at least that gives me a decent few days of progress on each stitch. I feel like my stitching in 2020 will also be more regular because I'm not doing the crazy shifts that I was doing last year. And although I was able to stitch at work last year, I was often so tired I couldn't. Um, and even when I was at home, my schedule was all over the place. So it was really funny times of day. Um, and I was never in a routine with stitching. Now, new job, I'll be getting home at five. I'll be able to stitch until 10.30. It should be more of a routine, um, which worked better for me in previous years. The only problem is when I spin up a whip that I'm not enjoying working on, I know that I'm just gonna go and play games for those five nights and won't stitch on it. So I don't, don't know how I'm going to tackle that. We'll see. Um, that's all for my plans, really. Mm, yeah. So I made your whip parade um, tomorrow or on the first. Um, that's everything. That's everything I wanted to talk about, except for uh, the giveaway. I know you're all here because you want to know if you won this. That's all. That's the only reason you came. Uh, this is Plum Street Sampler's kit. It's called My Early Days. Uh, this is the exclusive kit that I got at the Plum Street Sampler's retreat in November this year. Uh, it says, Now in my early days, teach me thy will to know. And this is um, based on an antique that Paulette saw, that she purchased, and she Plum Streetified it. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, so yeah. No, I didn't mean that in the way of the joke. That's not that's what she said. I just meant that's what she told us. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I said in the last video I would give this away. So I've got the YouTube brand and comment picker here. Uh, I've got the video URL. I've got filter comments based on a specific text. Uh, the text is Plum Street. And start, start raffle and pick a random winner. Please enter, I should have tried this before because I'm, I'm now not doing it right. Please enter the, the, please enter first the video URL and click the get YouTube comments. Oh, I had to get comments first. Okay, 50, yeah, 58 unique commenters. Start raffle, pick a random winner. Oh, 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 oh it's going crazy. The winner is Alita Casey. It says, just when I think you can't enable me any more than you already have, Sunspot and Beauty Spot fell into my LDS card. I love them. Also, congratulations on your new job. That Plum Street kit is awesome. The blue pop in it is everything. I agree. That's that's my favorite part about this is these bright blue parts here, here in the flowers. So Alita, congratulations. Um, I'll put my email in the description box below, um, or you can contact me on Instagram. I'm Tashage, T-A-S-H-A-G-E. Um, just contact me somehow and let me know your address and I will send this to you. You're lucky. You're so lucky. I actually was looking at this today thinking, oh, these floral parts are so pretty. Maybe I should just stitch that. <laughs> um, no, it's fine. Um, I'm very happy to give this to someone who wants to stitch it. Um, and my, people were concerned that I was going to regret giving this away. My mum has a kit as well because she was supposed to come to the retreat. So if I ever regret it, I'll go and stitch her kit. <laughs> Cause she's unlikely to stitch it. Um, there were a couple of people, Sarah, I was going to send you some fabric. Can you contact me on Instagram or use my email below? Um, AVS84, hi. Um, you asked for the Lindy Stitches freebie. Uh, happy to send it to you, very happy. Uh, if you can use my email below or contact me on Instagram and let me know your address and I'll send that to you. Okay, that's it. I'm starting to lose my voice again. I just can't speak like this. I'm not a big talker. Um, oh, one more thing, one more thing. I want to give this away. It's the chart for the Udo Whale. Uh, it came to me in this big box, but if you live overseas, I might not send the box. I'm sorry, it's just because of the cost of postage. But what I will send is the leftover threads, so you can choose your colors. Um, there's one, I, one thread I didn't use at all, so you can use that. And I'll send the charts. 
which are color and very large, but in Russian. But I think you'll figure it out. If you know how to cross stitch, you'll be fine. And I'll also send you the little needle minder because it's super cute. Um, and it also came with a little card. So I'll send you everything that's inside the box. Uh, if you want it, just um, leave me a message and say something about owls, O-W-L, something about an owl. Um, and if you want it, I'll do a random draw next video. I'm not going to promise when the next video is, <laughs> like I didn't for the last one. Did you notice that? Um, I'll do a random draw and pick a winner and send this to someone who wants to stitch it. Um, I'll send it anywhere in the world. Anyone can enter. Uh, you'd have to be a subscriber and it'd be nice if you'd thumbs up the video, but whatever, I don't care. Um, and that is all for today. <clears throat> Thanks for listening. I may be back tomorrow or the day after for a whip parade. I've said that like 30 times now, I'd better do it. Okay, bye. <laughs>